And Paul sent Timothy to him to comfort them that no man should be moved by these afflictions. You see how, how much the Holy Spirit talked about not being moved? Be unmovable, steadfast in the faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. There's, there's, more, than, there, there's more than one thing that can move you, that, try, that tries to move you. There's one thing that anchors you. There's a lot of things trying to move you. And there's one anchor. Hope is an anchor of the soul, and there's, and there's a lot of different things that, that, are, that would move you in the world. The Colossians were written this good word in their letter, that Jesus would present them holy and unblavable and unreprovable in his sight, that is, in God's sight. Jesus, see, the church is, is going to be Jesus' presentation to the Father. Jesus is he's, uh, bringing many sons to glory. He's, he's perfecting his... He's leading his sheep and protecting his sheep, taking them in and out and nourishing them, interceding for them. And in the end, he's going to present them to God. Amen. And Paul tells the, Corinthians, the Colossians that Jesus is able to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled and not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Not moved away from it. Amen. That the, the, sur the surf of life as it is, as it, remember in the Revelation it said the sea was like glass, the sea wasn't moving. See, that's a picture of peace and tranquility and the absence of, absence of trial, the absence of agitation. But in the world, the surf, it washes up on the sea. Time is never, it's relentless. You can't stand on the shore and, and watch for long enough to see the surf stop. The surf is always lapping up against against the shore, and this is what life is like. Life continues, the surf of life continues to beat on you, and you've got to have something to keep you not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Amen. You've got to have something to keep you from moving. And hope is, is the answer to that. In the garden, at the dawn of time, the serpent moved Eve when he tempted her to eat the fruit. She was moved. God put her in the garden, and there was, there was no reason for Eve, Adam, or Adam and Eve to, to think uh, of anything that they, that they lacked. There, there wasn't any reason to look at the tree that they, were, uh, that they were forbidden to eat. And Satan moved Eve to, to consider it. He moved her off far enough that she, she took it and ate it. Right. Moved her far enough that she thought wrong. She thought God was holding back something from her. She moved her enough to, to make her think that she would be better off by, by disobeying what God told See, uh -huh. Satan moved Eve, right. moved her. Cain was moved. <clears throat> Cain was moved with anger when he killed Abel in the field. He was moved. Now, God gave him a promise. If you do well, mm -hmm. you'll be accepted. Right. But he, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't moved by that. He was moved with anger and and, and killed, killed Abel. Mm -hmm. Balaam was moved with greed. He knew, he knew that he shouldn't teach Balak, ba um, yeah, Balak, to, uh, to cast a stumbling block in, the, yeah. in, in front of Israel. Mm -hmm. He knew he shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. But he was moved by greed yeah. more than he was moved by his knowledge of God. He knew that if you, could, if you could get Israel to, to commit fornication, God would curse them. That's right. Balak, Balaam knew that, so he taught Balak how to do it. So technically, Balaam didn't, didn't do this to Israel, but he taught, he taught Balak to do it. He was moved with greed. David was moved by when he, taught the, when he uh, numbered the armies of Israel, numbered the men of war. He was moved by something to do that. He was moved by uh, doubt, maybe. He was moved by something. I don't know exactly what it was, but he was, something moved David to number the men. I want to know how many, as, it, as if God can't say with many or few. See, that was the wrong thing to do, right. to number the men. Mm -hmm. It wasn't right. Yeah. David knew that God, David knew that Gideon with 300 took the Midianites. Uh -huh. David knew that. David knew in his, in his right mind, he knew that he didn't need to number, but something moved him. And, of course, we know it was, it was Satan provoked him to do this. And David was moved 
And then God cursed. Cursed the children. All temptation in whatever form is a danger of being moved. There's a lot of temptation can take a lot of different forms. But whatever form it is, whatever different form temptation comes in, every temptation is designed to move you in some way. An anchor, hope is designed to anchor you so you don't move. Like James said, every man sins when he is drawn away. Drawn away by his own lust and enticed. That is, he's moved, drawn away is that he was moved away from the road that leads to life. Drawn away is that he was moved away from the highway of holiness, wherein the, the fool wouldn't even err. Why would you want to leave that way? Even, even if you're a fool, you won't err. As long as you're in this way, then the beast don't travel on it. Why would you want to leave it? Because you were moved. You were deceived. Drawn away. Drawn away of his own lust would be moved away from sitting with Christ in heavenly places. See, there's, there's a great, a great uh, reality of spiritual location. I, would, I need to come up with a better way of saying that. But the highway of holiness, that's, a, that's a, this spiritual, an unseen location. God puts you in this way. The road that leads to life, that's a, that's a location that God put you and Satan in, through various weaponry is trying to move you away from where God put you. And the only way to counteract the devil's efforts is to be anchored where God put you. Amen. And that anchor is, is hope. Ephesians 2.13 says that we were made nigh by the blood of Christ. See, there's another word of location, made nigh, that's near. Mm -hmm. Made near by the blood of Christ, that's near to God, near to the holiest of all where, he, where his presence uh, resides. Temptation is designed to move us away from where God made us near. Mm -hmm. You've got to have an anchor in order to not move away. Here's some other spiritual locations. We were in darkness, now we're in light. Yeah. We were... Without, with regards to the kingdom, we were called them that are without. Now we are within. See, that's a spiritual, that's a location. Amen. We were in the outer court, that's which the, uh, uh, in the Revelation, the angel said, don't, don't measure the outer court. It's been given to the Gentiles. That is, it's been written off. Yeah. Don't measure it. It doesn't, it doesn't um, uh, amount to, to anything now. The outer court has been given to the Gentiles, but now we've moved into the inner court. Where the, where the presence of God is. See, there's a lot to this spiritual location. If we don't, if we don't know about the, the spiritual location, the heavenly place, the road that leads to life where God put us, well, then in the, uh, the value of an anchor, mm -hmm. see, is diminished. Mm -hmm. But when we realize God put us in a place where we couldn't have, we couldn't have climbed up into this place ourselves, now an anchor has great value, doesn't it? That God put us there, and then God gave us an anchor to keep us where he put us. Hebrews 10.22 invites us to draw near with a true heart. See, if there's a near, there, there has to be a far. <laughs> we were afar off. Now we're made nigh. And we're exhorted, Hebrews 10.22, draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. See, the, the, the better things are, they're, are closer, closer to God. The closer you are, the better things get. That's right. Temptation can come in many different ways. Temptation is more than just being tempted to lie and steal. Okay, the, uh, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with the uh, approach to uh, temptation as uh, just being limited to, uh, to stealing and to lying and to and to murder and the the, ob the obvious sins. Now, temptation can it can it can morph into a lot of different forms. Mm -hmm. Here here's some here's some different things that all of these things, all these different temptations it can multiple different uh, forms, multiple lots of different appearances, lots of different ways that they can come to us. But in the end, they're all designed to move us. Uh -huh. Now consider these different ways: suffering. Suffering is a temptation in some, in some way. Yeah. Satan can cause you to suffer. The world can cause you to suffer. You can cause yourself to suffer. God can send suffering to you. But in some way, all suffering has the capacity to move you away from where God puts you. 